Hi, I'm Brian Krauss with the Virginia Beach Master Gardeners, and I'm here today at the kitchen garden. This garden, developed and maintained by the Virginia Beach Master Gardeners, is located at the rear of the farmer's market on the corner of Dam Neck and Princess Anne Roads in Virginia Beach. It demonstrates examples and methods of backyard gardening that any home gardener might utilize in their own home garden. From soil enrichment techniques to home irrigation methods, from vertical gardening to unique raised beds, from companion planting techniques to container gardening. This garden provides something for the inner kitchen gardener in everyone. Back in the garden. Let's see what's going on. Hey, there's Fred over there. What are you doing, Fred? Well, hey, Brian. Well, what I'm doing today is I'm preparing this bed here for some uh, fall cool crop planting. And how we do that at the kitchen garden, first of all, we get a soil test done, which is, is probably the most important step because that way we know and don't have to guess how to amend our soil. So it's a real simple, you, you get one form, it's self-explanatory, you just look it over, make sure you're filling it out, and you'll get a little box here that you actually put your sample in. Now these are available at all the uh, public libraries here in Virginia Beach. And on the back side of this one, it tells you exactly how to conduct the soil test. So it's a fairly simple uh, thing to do. There is a small charge of $10 plus shipping, but it'll be the best $10 you've ever spent for your vegetable garden or just your yard or any gardening that you do. Now from there, you get this handy dandy uh, printout or analysis of your soil. And it's, it's really detailed and it really gives you a lot of good information. So what, it, what mine tells me is that we are, well, we are doing well in our major and micronutrients. We're high, very high, or sufficient in all of them. So we don't need to add any amendments for that. But another thing that it tells me is I need to add some nitrogen. Now, they're not gonna you're not going to see a test for nitrogen because it moves through the soil so rapidly that by the time they did their test and you got it back, it would already be dissipated into your soil. So they usually recommend that you add some type of nitrogen uh, in addition to other nutrients that you may need. So what they're telling me is to apply a nitrogen only fertilizer at a rate of two cups per 100 square feet. So now I know exactly what I need to do to amend my soil so I'm not over fertilizing or I'm not under fertilizing. Okay, so what I've chosen for my high nitrogen, because we do organic gardening methods here at the kitchen garden, is I'm just going to use blood meal. Okay, a blood meal is a 16% nitrogen, it has no phosphorus, and it has no potassium now. So, uh, you know, two cups per 100 square feet, well, all together here I've got 30 feet, so I just do some quick little math in my head, and I know I'll probably apply around I don't know, two thirds of a cup of the blood meal to my bed here to get it uh, up to speed. So what I'll do is I've got a load of compost here. I'll uh, measure it out and I'll add that to my compost and I'll just mix it in very good, very to get it a good mix on. Then what I do, we do no-till gardening over here at the kitchen garden. So what I've done is I'll just take my garden fork and I'll just aerate the soil, you know, punch a lot of holes in it, get it nice and aerated, and then I would just go ahead and add my compost with my amendments that I've put in there. And then I'll just take my rake here and rake it out so that it's nice and smooth. And then from there, I'll just go ahead and take my hoe, we'll furrow off our lines, and we'll go ahead and put our carrots in there. So really what you're saying is the soil is the basis to a good garden. That's correct, Brian. Very good. It's, it's, the soil is your fundamental building block 
of building healthy soil in an organic garden. So, uh, what if I don't want to set up a garden for winter? Another great question, Brian. And what it is, it's pretty much you'll follow the same process that I just talked to you about. Get your soil test, get you some compost, and go ahead and amend your bed. And the only extra steps you might add is you don't want to leave it fallow or bar barren over the winter, okay? So you could add straw or any kind of mulch. My favorite one is wheat straw. I mulch it up with my lawnmower. And then I just put two or three inches of it on my bed. Now, another thing we do here at the kitchen garden for uh, winter is we uh, sow winter cover crops on our bed. And that, uh, what we like to use is a combination of hairy vetch, crimson clover, and winter wheat. And we just let it grow over the winter. In the springtime, about four to six weeks before we're ready to plant into it. We come in, whack it down, cover it with black plastic, and then in a, at the end of that four to six weeks, boom, we just plant right into it, and uh, we always have a nice, luscious spring crop. And that's how we do things here at the Kitchen Garden. Great, Fred. Thanks a lot for your time today. Hey, Brian. Thanks for stopping in. Back here in the garden with Mike. Tell us something about vertical gardening, Mike. Hey folks, I'm Mike Horstman and I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking about vertical vegetable gardening. If you go online and Google vegetable gardening vertical, you'll get thousands of hits, many of them expensive. You really don't need that. Uh, first, the question is, of course, why do you vertically garden? It's pretty obvious. You save a lot of space. You get your vegetables up off the ground, away from slugs and disease. It, um, it, it uh, makes it a lot easier to take care of the plants. And finally, if you're like me, bending over or kneeling is very difficult, so it gets them up at eye level. Now the question is, okay, what can you vertically garden? Some things come to mind uh, quite naturally, peas and beans and cucumbers, the climbers, but there are a lot of other things that you can grow uh, that might not actually come to mind. Uh, here in the kitchen garden, we've used a lot of homemade uh, vertical supports. Uh, you can see behind me, uh, beans growing up a, um, a support which is made out of bamboo. It's extremely effective. Um, we have, uh, of course, peppers which have stakes which get them up off the ground. Uh, we have tomatoes in the background on a scaffold which you really can't see. Uh, over here, of course, we have loofah which is growing vertically. You could never do that on the ground. You wouldn't have enough room. And then on the back over here, we have grapes along a fence. And the fence is probably the most underused vertical aid as far as gardening itself uh, is concerned. And so you, um, you vertically garden to save space, to keep your plants healthy. And of course, the question is, what else can you use for supports? You can use stakes, you can use um, um, tomato uh, supports and so on. And I'll take you back and show you something that you might not have considered in just a second. Uh, this is our uh, hoop trellis. It's made out of cattle panels, actually two of them, and this is vertically gardening with attitude. Um, it uh, allows you to grow some things which you might not normally consider. For example, in this case, pumpkins. Uh, and uh, the pumpkin will grow probably half again as large, and that creates a problem. Uh, how do you manage to support the fruit without breaking off? Um, my wife suggested originally, or online suggested, pantyhose. My wife laughed and said, no one wears pantyhose anymore, but they do wear knee highs. And these are great. You can put it around the fruit, tie it to the top. It expands with the fruit and supports it. I have a 25-foot Walton squash growing along my back fence right now with five to six-pound squash, and all of them are properly equipped with socklets on. It's a great way to go. In the kitchen garden and I'm with Fred again we're going to take a look at, at a very unique raised bed. Good morning. What makes this bed so unique is that it's uh, called an enabling bed and what it does it's built up off the ground so it enables you to garden without having to bend and stoop and constantly be raised, raising up and down. Uh, as you can see it's right here at waist level I can amend my soil right here. I don't have to bend or stoop. I can plant here. I can harvest uh, some of these beautiful eggplant that we're growing here. 
uh, it's all right here within reach. I can plant flowers in it, which will uh, help me attract pollinators to the garden to get my vegetables pollinated. And there's many things that you can grow in here. We've grown carrots in here. We've grown uh, ground cherries in here. Uh, just about any vegetable you would want to grow, you could continue to grow in here. Uh, another benefit is if uh, a disability will put you in a wheelchair or something like that, it's designed where you can roll right up under it and you can still garden from here uh, without uh, having to bend, stoop, and all the other strenuous things that come with a uh, garden. And that's about it for this bed. We appreciate you stopping by. Thanks a lot.